Well, hello, Blue Herons. It's good to be interacting with you again. We are going to do our first main lesson YouTube video today, and I hope you have all enjoyed reading about and learning about the Applegate Trail. So today we're going to do the first page on the list that I sent home, which is drawing a covered wagon. So I'm all set up here. I have my main lesson book. I have my colored pencils and my block crayons. And I'm going to start off with my brown block crayon. This is the lighter brown. I'm missing my darker brown. But I'm going to use the lighter brown and this is going to be the box of my wagon. And we're going to try to keep this as simple as we can today and make it easy for you at home. So I'm just going to start with some nice even strokes of my block crayon. So this will be the side of my wagon and then we're going to kind of be looking at an angle at our wagon. So then I'm also going to kind of come out in an angle and this is going to be the front of my wagon. Like that. So it's going to kind of give it a little bit of the shape of a rectangular prism. Okay. So that's the start. Next, I am going to take my peach colored pencil and we're going to do the canvas top of the wagon. Now you might think the canvas tops of the wagons were white, but after they traveled all that way across a prairie, they were not so white anymore. So ours is a wagon that has seen a lot of long days on the trail. So it is not so new looking anymore. So I'm gonna do one hoop at the front, all the way up and around. And then I'm going to do some that are just little half hoops. So I'm going to start up here at the top. And I'm just going to kind of curve and come down. They're kind of like upside down L's. And one more. Okay. And then I can draw my top and I'm going to kind of make it just sag just a little bit in between these hoops because it's fabric, it's not tight all the time on there. And then we can do some little lines just to kind of show some folds and things in the fabric. Okay. And then I'm going to put this aside for a minute get my black colored pencil and we're going to do the front opening of the wagon. So this would be where the driver would sit, obviously. Color that in nice and evenly. Okay. And then I'm going to do some lines with my peach around that. Because that's kind of like they would gather up the canvas there. And that could protect the wagon from the weather. Or it could protect the driver from the sun. Okay. And then I'm going to take the side of my lead or my peach pencil and I'm going to color in that canvas top give it a nice dusty look Okay, and if you want to, 
you can take lightly with a black or you can use your silver pencil and I'm going to add a little bit of shadow. Just kind of makes these folds pop a little bit. You can even go back in with your white and you can blend. Okay, then along the front here of our wagon, this is where you would have a seat for the driver. So I'm going to take my dark brown, make a little seat there for my driver to sit on. It was really just like a board, it was very simple. the support underneath. That's all it was. Okay. So now we are ready to do the wheels of our wagon. Now, most covered wagons had a larger set of wheels in the back and a smaller set of wheels in the front. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. So I'm gonna start with my large rear wheel. And to start, I'm just gonna kind of visualize the size of circle that I want. And then I'm going to get it down and I can start adding some thickness. And I'm using my dark brown colored pencil still. Okay, and then in the middle of the wheel, we have a hub, right? We still have hubs, hub caps on our cars today. And that's exactly what the center of a wagon wheel was called. It was called the hub. 
And coming off of that hub, we have the spokes. see what fractions we're dividing our wheel into here. Okay. And then, of course, on the other side of the wagon, there's another rear wheel, which we can kind of see through here, so I'm just going to kind of see where that one goes. Looks pretty good. Add some thickness in. Kind of like form drawing, really. Kind of seeing what's going behind and what's going in front. And then you can see a bit of the hub of this one. And spokes coming off. Okay. Okay, and then on the front, so I'm going to make it, since this isn't totally from the side, we have kind of an angled view here, I'm going to make these front wheels kind of turned at an angle. So they're not going to look entirely round. They're almost going to look like an oval a little bit. And so these are my small wheels. So the hub is in about the same place. See, I'm making them more of an oval shape. And you'll notice it looks a little bit thicker on the sides as it does on the top and the bottom because that's kind of the perspective that you get of a hoop when it's turned to the side. Okay. And my hub also looks a little bit squishy. Not a perfect circle. And the spokes are coming off here. front wheel. And we'll have the other front wheel over here on the other side of the wagon. Also turned at an angle.
So we can see most of this front wheel under the wagon because it is so much smaller than the rear wheel. Okay, and then going between these wheels, right, there was an axle. And an axle is kind of that that rod that connects wheels and allows them to turn together. If you think back to our science works field trip, when we were doing the Lego engineering and we were building our cars, right, you had to get those little Lego rods to attach your wheels to so that your car would turn. And we were experimenting with different ways of attaching our wheels and if it was better to attach them really tight to the body of the car or looser farther away. Then there's kind of this block that would attach the axle to the underside of the wagon, which is going to cover up some of our wagon wheel. That's okay. Not a big deal. Okay. Then if you wanted to, to show that these wheels are kind of shadowy and behind the wagon, you can add a little bit of black to these wheels on the far side of the wagon, just to make them drop back a little bit. be careful when you're doing that that you're not going over the spokes in the front so like I'm gonna shade this one I'm gonna skip over this front spoke and then you can kind of tell which spoke belongs to which wheel all right and then we have to have something to attach our oxen to right we're not going to draw oxen in this picture. We're just going to focus on the wagon. We're going to keep it simple, like I said. So there was what we call the tongue of the wagon. Our tongue's kind of coming off at an angle here. And it's just kind of laying there in the grass. You have this long pole that came off of your wagon. And then there would be a little cross piece off of that. And that is what you would hitch your oxen or your mules to. wanted to you could add a couple rings on there where your harnesses would go and there's our wagon you could add a few details if you want on the box of your wagon you can go back with a brown colored pencil and add a few details you might want to add some planks to kind of show the construction of your wagon. Add some nails on those planks to show where they come together. Just nice little ways to add detail to your drawing. All right, we've got a wagon. What do we need next? Scenery, right? Gotta beautify. Okay. So I am thinking that my wagon is lying along the bank of a beautiful little stream. 
comes off the page just right here. A babbling little brook. So there's some water. And then my wagon is resting on the grass. The beautiful green grass of the Rogue River Valley. That it has traveled all the way across the country to take the Applegate Trail to. There's a bit of a hill behind my wagon. The grass kind of comes up. There we go. And as always, you want to blend colors. I'm going to add some bright green. Right? Because it's springtime now, right? We've got nice bright green grass. Maybe this wagon has been sitting here since it was unhitched in the fall when its occupants made it to the Rogue Valley. And now it's just sitting here in the field in the nice spring green grass. Yeah. See how nice that looks with the two shades of green? Okay. Sorry, still figuring out how to position this for our camera. Okay. And then, of course, I am some shade of blue. And then, of course, I'm going to make a lovely blue sky above my wagon. And then we can go back with colored pencils and we can add some details like maybe there are some cattails growing along the banks of this creek. We all know how important cattails have been historically in the Rogue Valley. The pioneers might have even eaten cattail roots to survive before they got their crops planted because their roots are pretty good. And then we can do some grass here along the creek. There we go. And then under the wagon wheels, I can kind of show where the grass has kind of been laid down by the wagon wheels and it also provides a bit of shadow where these wheels lie. Maybe a little bit under the tongue as well. And I can kind of highlight the tops of my hill. There we go. 
I think I'm gonna stop there. If you wanted to, you could add a tree or two up here on the hill. You could add some flowers on the grass, but we want the wagon to be our focal point. And I think we've accomplished that today. So I hope that this was really helpful for you. I hope you're doing well at home. Um, I miss you guys a whole lot. Isaac misses you too. And I will see you again tomorrow um, for an uh, example for writing about the Applegate Trail. So uh, I will see you guys later. Bye.